Now in Surah Al-Ma'idah to continue forward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about not only just the Yahud, but He talked about the Yahud and Nasara. And He talked about that how these people, they broke that covenant. They broke that promise and they broke that commitment they made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the very beginning of this surah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna talk about this matter and inshallah we'll get straight to Salat Taraweeh. In the very beginning of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not only just in the beginning of this surah, but even in other parts of this same surah, Allah talked about the dietary laws of Islam. The dietary restrictions in Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear that these are the things that are haram and the rest are, the rest, everything that does exist around you is halal. Now when it comes to our matters, we have to understand that Islam is a, is a complete picture. You cannot just take one aspect of Islam and neglect the others. While we are making strong attempts and we're making sincere attempts to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are engaged in our salat, we come for taraweeh, we're fasting during the day, but we cannot neglect the other aspects of, of the salat, um, of, of our deen. One of those aspects of our deen is halal rizq. It is halal sustenance. There's a hadith in Sahih Muslim narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَقْبَلُ طَيِّبًا uh, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَقْبَلُ إِلَّا طَيِّبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only thing He accepts is only pure. And He loves that which is pure. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مَا أَمْرَ, الم... وإن الله أمر الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مَا أَمْرَ بِهِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And He orders the, the people, He orders us what He ordered the Prophets. And what He ordered the Prophets? يَا أَيُّهَا الرُّسُلْ كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَعْمَنُوا الصَّالِحَةِ O oh Prophet, O oh my messengers, eat that which is good, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made pure for you, and do righteous deeds. In another place Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum, washkuru lillah. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing upon consuming that which is halal and pure. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he gives the example of a man, who is going on this, who is traveling on this long journey and his clothes are disheveled and he is filled of dust and he's praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's lifting up his hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's saying, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. He's asking and he's pleading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Prophet says that his clothes are haram and his consumption is haram. How will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his dua? This is something very important. If we are making ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are fully committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but our, our consumption is haram, then none of our du'as are being accepted. None of our du'as du are being accepted. Now there are two ways of consuming haram. There are two ways. Either one way is that you have a haram business or haram job. In that case, we should sincerely make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He helps us find another alternative. If the, if the sincere desire in our heart is to find something else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us find something else. The second way of consuming haram is when a person, he commits, uh, he cheats other people and he commits fraud with other people and he takes money in that way. That's also another way of consuming haram. So we have to be very careful, and not only that, another way of consuming haram is not being careful of what we are eating. I honestly tell you, what we eat today, I guarantee you, 99% of the public, we don't even know what we're eating, honestly. We don't even know what we're eating. Before you do anything, before you eat anything, check what you're eating. Is it halal? Is it haram? Because your du'as are dependent on this. If we have, if we are consuming haram, and we are fasting in the month of Ramadan and we're making our du'as, our du'as are not being, are not being accepted. They're being thrown back at us. They're being rejected. So that's why this is extremely important when it comes to these matters. This is just one covenant we have made out of so many other covenants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once again, if you ever get the opportunity, study Surah Al-Ma'idah. It's a beautiful surah from beginning to end. It teaches us the mistakes of the previous nations so that we don't make the same mistakes.